Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight on this last reading, right? Graduate reading. Um, I have, this is my first graduate introduction, and I'm going to try not to cry. Okay. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Sarah Leamy. She, um, over the past semester, she has impressed me deeply with her talent. Her cute, precise pieces remind me of our best writers, including Diane Williams. Um, she's a born performer and yet uh, deeply humble about her gifts. I, I want to share a little quick story. She sent me her bio, and I think every other word was something like, um, like, like, like just like self-effacing, which is gorgeous. Like I learned to do that with myself. And so um, it's been an honor, an absolute honor, to have her among the first group of writers I've worked with here. Um, and I just want to say to you directly, you have really helped me. Um, I know sometimes I feel a little bad because I know that the teacher is supposed to help you. But it's, it's been a two-way street, so thank you. Worrying is a waste of the imagination. 
as if it were that easy to stop. It's not. My insomnia can vouch for that. The air was chilly already on those October mornings, and so after rummaging through the piles of clothes on the cabin floor, I pulled on thick black jeans and boots as well as a heavy sweatshirt. The water boiled finally, and I poured myself a strong coffee, setting milk in an egg cup for Henry, the cat. He would be staying inside today, or at least until I knew the dogs had moved along or been caught. Either way, I'd keep my boys safe. I took my coffee outside and I sat in the light of the sunrise and it felt good to be out, but my nerves were still shocked from the dog's chaotic start to my day. I thought about getting the shotgun, but I knew I'd not be able to do much of anything. So I filled my pockets with rocks on one side and cat kill on the other. I set off downhill. I couldn't resist seeing what had happened. At the lowest point in the valley I found them. One had been shot but lived. Another lay there, obviously dead, and the third was nowhere to be seen. Fuck. Dogs. I hate them. <laughs> At the lowest point in the valley I found them, though. One had been shot, but he lived. Another lay there, obviously dead, and the third was nowhere to be seen. <sighs> I stood five, away, five feet away and muttered to myself, Fuck. Dogs. I hate them. The dog watching me was white, with brown patches, broad faced, with tongue out, panting, scared. His tail was still in the dirt of the arroyo. I stepped closer, and his eyes widened. I squatted down. You okay, kiddo? I tried to see where he'd been shot, but I couldn't work it out. Was he going to die on me? Like karma or something? I waited a beat, but nothing changed. I glanced at the dead one, female, teats, extended, as if it had just had pups. No rescuing her, but maybe she was better off, you know, no more breathing constantly. I don't know. The boy watched me unblinking, so I edged closer. You okay? I repeated. The tail wagged slightly, and I relaxed. I sat down, close, but not within reach. I couldn't stop shaking, though, and I tried to look calm, strong, and not show weakness on my sleeve like I've been accused of. But the dog didn't care to listen. He whimpered. The bullet had scored a path across his rump, red on white, and I looked closer and I saw blood dripping from a broken and shot back leg. I could leave him, be done with it. I stood, I looked at the two, do two dogs and thought, fuck you, you killed my chickens, you tore up my Henry, you treed me, fuck you, I'm not scared of you, I'm not. And I walked away with those stones in my hand, ready to throw them. I'd been a great, great picture at one time, and I had good eye-hand coordination. I picked one thinking I'd brain the dog, the boy, the living one, the one with the bloody butt. Put him out of his misery, or was it mine? The truck rumbled down the dirt road in the distance, and I heard yelling and grinding gears. Another gunshot, another yelp, another dog down. More yelling, cheering this time, as if this was a game to them. Raise puppies to shoot them? I looked back. Under the juniper lay that boy dog near his mama, and I saw the pain in his eyes and the blood on the sand, and he wobbled in place, trying to try limping towards me, but he collapsed with a grunt. Fuck. I dropped the stones, and his eyes blinked slowly, fading now, giving up or something, and the truck headed down the valley again, leaving these dogs dying in the dirt. I walked up to the pub, and I sat close by with my hands out to be sniffed and he licked my fingers, and his tongue was softer than Henry's. And then the truck turned around and headed our way, and I hunkered down in the dirt, hiding as scared as these dogs must be. Keeping my head down, I reached out with a handful of cat kibble, and I offered it up. The dogs ate, eyes on me, tail, tail with a slight wag. The truck passed us, too close to ignore. Their radio blared out the local talk show. Or was that them spouting out crap over the crunching tires on rocks? I turned back to the injured pup. You hungry? Why? Do you want to come home with me? Why, why? Uh. You'll be good to Henry, promise. No killing cats in my home. <coughs> Deal? Half a bag. I squatted down next to him, murmuring, Fine, fine. This will hurt, but trust me. We'll get you back in time for breakfast. Okay, one, two, three, and I hefted him up. A slight body of 30 pounds, all skin and bones. We'll get some weight on you, fella. It's okay, let's go home. I'm hungry too. We took off, 
up through the scrubble and then back to the cabin on the hill. And it wasn't easy, and I fell a few times, almost dropping the dog, but I didn't let go. We scrambled through troya cacti and junipers over scrubby grass and little else. It's barren land up there. And up on the flat area around my home, I opened the front door and Henry, the cat, ran out, but I didn't worry. I set the dog down on a thick blanket near the wood stove and brought over a bowl of water. He lapped up half of it, spat it back out and flinched, but he wagged when I didn't yell at him. Poor bastard. Food then? I'll make us some bacon and eggs. No tortillas for you though. That'll work, right? And he watched. His leg had stopped bleeding, but it looked broken. And I picked up the phone to call the vet while putting on the kettle. Time to start the day properly. I poured out more cream for the cat. It needed a bribe now that now we had a dog around. <coughs> It'll be fat, fine. Cats and dogs can be friends, right? We can make it work. Mm -hmm. Like this. Someone needs me. Welcome to Paradise Apartments, grunted the brand, bland little landlord with a big belly. You are going to stick around, aren't you, JB? I held out 600 in cash. He took it after looking me up and down, unsure as to whether I was a woman or a man. Not that I cared what he thought. We took another quick walk around together and signed the year's lease. Not that I had any real plans for anything beyond a good night's sleep, a shower, a beer or three. And I wasn't picky about the order of things. Such was the appeal of this newly won freedom. With a quick and sweaty handshake, I shut the door behind him. I scratched my beer belly, pulled up my old black jeans, noticing the zipper had broken again. Truth or consequences was a half-dead town in New Mexico with closed storefronts, cheap rent, and the lure of hot springs to ease the long hours on the road. My new apartment ended up being long, narrow, yet bright. It was New Mexico after all. Huge open skies, sunshine all around, and a lack of people to ask anything from me. Perfect. The two living rooms faced the building next door, and another one opened out onto the parking lot out back where I parked my truck. The rooms were small, perhaps 12 by 12 at most, and with five holes in the wall near the TV cable in the corner. Upstairs, some soap operas screaming drama of lies and secrets bled out. Fake wood flooring hit the rotten sections underfoot. There was a bathroom in back, or rather a shower store to be more precise and this shabby ambience of peel. The crusty elegance that this was a step down in lifestyle. My wife, sorry, my ex-wife, <laughs> former wife, she who shall not be named, she would have hated it. Therefore, I would love it. Obviously, we didn't part on good terms, but who ever really does? I wasn't man enough for her, or so she yelled that last time I saw her at home. Home. Fuck you. Ready to settle in properly, I opened the back of the truck. It was a Toyota, second generation forerunner, a dream vehicle in my 50s, what with its two inch lift, BFG, all terrain, oversized tires, locking discs, loaded roof rack, full of camping gear, books, and a cat. <laughs> Odie was a sad looking lost soul I found in the dumpster the day before leaving. <coughs> he stared at me from the back seat now, not happy with spending a week on the road. Odie. All 10 pounds of scruffy ginger fluff and stumpy tail. He jumped out of the tailgate and ran for the nearest juniper tree. So much for his company. Good luck, fella. Claim your freedom. I did. And muttering to myself, I picked up his litter tray, a selection of wet cat food, and grain-free kibble. And I didn't forget his fleece blanket that used to be someone's favorite sweater. I grabbed a six pack and stuffed it on top of the litter tray and then walked back upstairs carefully stepping over the third step, the loose one, the wobbly one. I left the door open, whistling a tune by R.E.M. I sat on a green corduroy armchair, picking at a loose thread on my old Wrangler jeans, doing nothing much. The window overlooked the barren trees, all those trees, lots of them, not many trees, not really, not what I'm used to. And those two cars passed, one siren in the <coughs> distance, Television upstairs. Yep. The tiny porch overlooked the town of truth or consequences, and it was no Manhattan, and that was the point. 
She wouldn't look, think to look for me here, even when the lawyer gives her the updated financial report. I cleaned out our savings account eight days ago and she'd not noticed, trusting me to do everything right despite the day. I was free now. What with all that money hidden in the truck and the final divorce papers on their way to an anonymous judge somewhere in the city, I was free to stay in a rundown, paint peeling, rickety old southwestern house with only four apartments around me. Only four. What a concept. It'll be great. It'll be great. There's nothing wrong with a bit of peace and quiet. I'm fine, just me and the cat. Just fine, the two of us. That is, if it comes home. The sky was darkening at 10 when Odie strode across the barren room and over to the kitchen. Once on the yellow formica, he yelled for his dinner. I knew he would. I knew he'd come home. Somebody needs me. Of course so. Do you want the wet or dry? I asked. The cat stared me down. Geez, can't you take a joke either? With the IP can, IPA can open in one hand, it was a bit of struggle to pour out his food without spilling too much beer. And it'll take practice. I've only been doing this a week, a week or two now. I've got time, lots of time. In fact, I'm lost in time. My phone rang. My phone? What the hell was my phone? It stuck in the jumper, and I jumped up and I grabbed for it, but I tripped on one of those strips of loose wooden flooring, dropped the can of IPA, and the cat screeched, and then my knee twisted as I yelled, Emily! <laughs> this is uh, from our class this week. Sorry, Rick, I didn't change the title. <laughs> You wander through the narrow streets of Old Rome with a green rucksack hung over your left shoulder, dripping into a sweat-soaked t-shirt, aimless, reading signs, getting out of your head, and it's a good challenge to know where you are because you lost your mum, not paying attention as you do. And the sun boils your brains, fries your pink skin, while you hide within cathedrals and churches, never your favourite places, seeking out cafes down worn-out cobblestone alleys, and the white noise of the city, one you'd run to, come to, soothes you like a mountain or an ocean does. And in the afternoon shade in the Colosseum, you follow some lads down crumbled steps. And when they jump by a fence to keep out tourists, you do the same, comfortable but not looking back. <laughs> so. And sliding in sand, you slip against stone walls and rock crumbles and falls. And you hear your mom's voice telling you to watch out, and you do, watching those dark-haired boys in shorts and sandals. And you follow them in and out of hidden paths, taking you deeper. And you're not afraid, not of this or them. But you head down into ancient ruins, silent but for a muffled hum from above, of tourists talking, and the clicks of their cameras and shuffling shoes on sunken stairs. And you drop your pack, hoping to hear a heartbeat, something, her voice. But no, there's nothing left. And you sweep your hand, dust to dust. Two sharp, short little pieces to finish with. But let me, turning 20. Afternoon in the pub with mom and dad. They're local, of course. You have a few quiet drinks together, although you're not really allowed one. Doctor's orders. Makes sense, but still. Your dad gets you half instead of the usual <coughs> pint. Your mom has a Chardonnay, and dad has a bottle of some oddly strong beer. You all eat salt and vinegar crisps. The pub is fairly quiet for a Saturday. It's the one you all used to go to years ago when you lived in, at home. But now though you live in London and it's not, not the best time in your life. Broken teeth, you've been pregnant, now you're not. You failed college, you're broken spirited. You quit because at least it's sunny on your birthday, but no one smiles. Your dad is in his striped shirt, a tie, top button undone. It's the weekend after all. His hair was cut recently and no longer reminds you of Einstein, and you miss his crazy white hair. Your mom tries hard to keep you all talking, but it's not working. When it's time for another, your dad goes to the bar and you head to the bathroom. You do your business, flush and wash your hands, and the door opens and closes. Same story, different day. A female voice asks, am I in the wrong bathroom? You turn tall, scruffy, and pretty skinny these days, pale face, haunted eyes, and needle marks on your eye and on your arm. And she takes in your haggard, angry expression and backs out, hands up, panicked, and she slams the door. You stand there. 
You dry your hands before walking out to your mom and dad. Your mom asks you what's wrong. You tell her. You can't hold it in, you tell her. Your mom stands up fast, this woman in the thick, dark glasses and that bleached albino body, and she storms over to that woman and she tells her, my daughter is sick, she's getting poked and jabbed by doctors every day, blood drawn, pills to medicate, MRIs and CAT scans, dentists once a week to fix a broken face, and all the bloody hospitals, and you dare judge my daughter, my girl? She yells at the woman in sacks and a pale pink blouse, and your mum is relentless. She stands there, full of your mum's fire and ice, and this is why you hate your hometown, and why you love your mum. <laughs> the last novel. First date, number five. The conversation about my underlands didn't go quite as I thought. <laughs> We were talking about fashion over dinner, and she brought out her glossy magazines and her high-end glasses matched her shoelaces. She folded her hands protectively over her lap, shiny boots tapping on the floor. I tried to bond with her, asking the leading questions, but then she asked me what was I thinking. No, truly. And so I told her. In my twenties, tiny whiteys were my undies of choice. Family friendly, you could buy them anywhere. And they were sexy too in the right context. <laughs> in my thirties, I'd hang out in the backyard in boxes with stripes, striped boxes against a flat tan stomach and little elves. Perhaps a cowboy boot and boots if they were rapper season. And then came the sensible hip huggers of my forties, cotton only, faded colours, flip flops, softer stomach, more sitting, less striding. And I asked, at 50 though, what's next? She knocked back her whiskey, kissed me softly, and said, depends. <laughs> <laughs>